Another two two. Gray has a two three, right? Yep. Welcome everyone to another edition of the future of wrestling known as FTR. I am Mr. Haminator as always. And we are here live in Nashville, Tennessee. This is Mark Evans town. This is his hometown of Tennessee. This, we're in Nashville though, but he's from Matt Memphis. And he's about to get, he's in action right now. Gonna go against another victim. <laughs> Mark Evans has been in an impressive role. He's been impressed, very impressive as of late. For three straight weeks, he has been undefeated here in FTR, taking out numerous people, two people that were the same, two matches that were the same, and that was Mark Evans versus Sonny Kiss, and Mark Evans destroys. Whatever he sees, he picks him. He destroys. Whoever they pick for him, he victimizes them. He acts like a total badass in the ring. An MMA fighter, at least, at all, as always. You can see those UFC gloves. Mark Evans is ready. He's like an MMA fighter. That is, that is his persona, as being a top badass here in FTR. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have have in our main event. Here we are when our this this opponent, the opponent for 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 Mark Evans, we have Jeremy Batoni. Jeremy Batoni, we've been scheduling to have him in his debut for his debut for quite a while. Last week on FTR, Jerry Batoni was telling us in the chat that he wants that he wants to challenge Mark Evans, that he thinks that he's just a paper challenge champion, a phony champion. The only reason he held the championship is because the only reason he held the championship because he thinks he's all that. Yeah. He thinks he's some kind of a yeah. badass. Yeah, but he's gonna he says yeah. he's gonna show yeah. what yeah. Jeremy yeah. Tapatone yeah. is all about. Well that could that be it? Could, could we see that? He's saying all Jeremy Batoni is he's just a punk bitch from Tennessee. He's gonna He decided to he's starting to challenge him. Oh look at this. But now Mark Evans is not going to take anything of that. We got a kickoff right now, starting of the match. And now Mark Evans with those knees. And now we're starting off with a nice takedown. Very nice technical matches between each other. And now, oh, Mark Evans with a speeding bullet ramming Jeremy Batoni outside our ringside, right in our commentary table. Oh, look at that! Look at—he's just driving his knees right in the apron. Those, those naked knees—they don't even have anything. And I just go for a DDT. No, Jeremy batoni hes got him off his shoulders. Pretty doing good against Mark Evans right now. There's a little bit. Comes in at a count of five. And now, oh, here we go. Jerry Batoni launches him in the ropes. What's he going to go for? Oh, throws him over his shoulders with a with that backdrop. This is what attention, this is what Mark Evans' attention is. He finds the people's, he finds the opponent's weaknesses wherever it is, wherever it's targeted around their body, around their body, and he targets them and, and gets that victory. That's what Mark Evans does. He calls himself the best in the world. He brings the weakness out of everyone that comes in his way. He's been proven in it these past three weeks. He is undefeated here on FTR. I don't think anybody could stop him. 
Very nice reverse DD, reverse STO by Jerry Patoni. And I'll wait. Uh oh, here we go. Yes. Oh, drop some of the STO. Ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, we have more matches for you guys to hear tonight. As we have the tag team champions, will be on. We'll be going against the tag team champions who finally got a win over the tattooed warriors who have been getting losing and losing yeah, week after week and that is the submission fraternity as they go against the the two hell the two demons from the depths of hell who are minions of eric morrow's which eric morrow will be in a match tonight as he goes against in another rematch cody boom in our main event and that is the Hellhounds, Jacob Roundelman and Di Diablo against the T Submission Fraternity. I'm surprised if Jerry Petoni is putting some action. Look, look at this. Look at that. Most of, by now we could have, we could be, by now we would see in Jerry Petoni we could be seeing Mark Evans being destructive, right, and being a dominant, the dominant one of the match. But it looks like Jerry Batoni has got what it. It looks like he's got this in the bag right now. Look at the cockiness of Jerry Batoni. Just pushing up, just showing off, right here in this this crowd, right here in Nashville, making a mockery of his of his hometown. You know, Mark Evans going to pick him up, but no. Oh, very nice. Very nice suplex by Jerry Petone. Oh no, Jerry Petone is going to put him away. Oh gosh. Oh shit. The curb stomp. What a curb stomp. Just driven his head across the mat. And what's this? What's Jerry Petone going for? Or for. Oh, back elbow. Try to the head. Uh oh, can we be seeing it? No way, what's this? Breaks him up, drop. Oh, drops him on his face. This is not looking good for the de the before, for the destructive one. This is not looking good for Mark Evans. As he's been being destroyed. Oh, no. Jerry Patoni could be took. What is this here? What's he going to put him away? Oh, he's got him in the tongue and death grip. Could we see it? Could we see the end of Mark Evans? No. Mark Mark Evans still stays in it. He's going to go for it. Something, no. Mark Evans, though, throws him over his shoulders, though. Mark Evans is feeling it. He's got to be feeling it. But wait, he's got him up. He's got him up on his shoulders. He's going to drop the FU. But no. Jerry Petoni with those elbows. Nice counter. Back and forth kickoff. And I was to go for it. Oh, front slam. Jim, we could have saw, we could have saw another victim by the hands of Mark Evans. But no. Nice. We saw a nice counter. Staying away from that move. And now we finally got so no. Oh, Jerry Patoni now back on it. Jerry Patoni. Oh wait, no. Mark Jerry. Evans. Throwing his boot around at him. And it was this. Oh, oh, right in the. That looked like it landed on the low turnbuckle. And now, what's this? Mark Evans going to try to go for a submission. Or try to gonna put him away with a submission hold. He's got him with the recliner. The recliner, no. The referee. It's Mark, Mark Evans trying to do some. Trying to figure out what he can do to put away the French. The French Crusader. The French, the French vigilante, known as Jeremy Batoni. Go now, go for a D. D oh, 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 oh. Not looking oh, good. He made him busted wide open. Mark Evans sees the blood. Oh, he's. Nice counter, though. Now he throws him back down. But Mark Evans, Mark Evans ain't taking a bunch of it. He ain't taking enough of it. Uh-oh, here we'll see if he can go for it again. He's got him up on his shoulders. 
Is can he drop him again? Can he drop him this time? F you. Mark Evans with the F you. All he has to do is pin him. All right, the mat. Cover now. One, two, no. Mark Evans now. That could have put away, put him away, but what an impressive showing by Jerry Patone. Just managing to kick out at, at almost a two and a half. Uh oh, it looks like it could be over. Once Mark Evans puts him away with this, this could all she wrote. But wait a minute, wait a minute. He caught him. Oh! Cobra clutch. Whatever that was. And now he's all fired up now. One of the fire forearm. And another one. He's all fired up. All the blood rushing through his head. And now he's go. Oh, it drops him with his elbow. And he's gonna go for it again, trying to bust him over and again. Try to bust him over just like him. Oh boy. This could be it for Mark sure. Evans. If he puts him away with this. No, Mark Evans backs off of it. And I counter my mark. Oh, it's, oh, nice counter by by Jerry Batone. Jerry Batone with a with a counter. Gonna go for a cover now, right here. One, two. Oh, Mark Evans manages to get the shoulder up. Jerry Batone. Mark Evans trying to keep his streak alive. Now he sends him in the corner. Oh, yeah, what's this? What's he? What's he gonna go for? He's got a sized, sized up on the top turnbuckle. Uh oh, ain't no. Mark Evans on top. Oh, drops the elbow from the top rope. Oh, he could do. No. Nice counter by Jeremy Batone. But wait, wait, wait. He's going to try to sneak something. He's trying to sneak a win here. One, two. No, that could have been it. The streak could have ended like that. That is just a, a cocky way to do it. Oh, nice counter by Mark Evans. And now he's going to try to do it again. He's got him sized up. Mark Evans this time. Can he put him away? He's got him. Oh, he's going to throw him up with the pop-up powerbomb. That's got to be it. All he has to do is pin him. And it'll be over. One, two. Three and that's it. Mark Evans. Streak continues. What a close match. What a an equal match. All I could say is Mark Evans' streak was in jeopardy after that. But Mark Evans stayed in it. And he's straight to it at his word. Nobody and I mean nobody in this lot in that locker room can defeat Mark Evans. As you can see right there, Jeremy Patoni trying to sneak in a win. He tried to sneak in the win by having his foot on the ropes. But he's right here with the strength to get up. Managed to get the shoulder up. That was, that was the one that could have ended the streak. But no, this move. Kept him alive. The pop up power bomb. Mark Evans, one true dominant force here in FTR, proving that he is the one D indeed, indeed a champ. I don't know if anybody could stop him. He's had that championship for about three weeks now. What a ma great forms of great force of offenses, defenses, great showing of performance between those two. I got to give Jeremy Patoni credit. He almost was close enough. He was he was close to beating the streak, but he wasn't close enough. Mark Evans is the true American badass of the future of wrestling. But now coming up next, we've got 
We've got Duke and Drake going against this team, the team of the L team of the Luchadores in an elimination tag team match. Just say a elimination tag team rematch from two weeks ago. Just saying. Shit. Boogies, if you're watching this, let's let you know you almost came close. Your guy came close. Closer than um, the first week of FTR when Sunny Kiss uh, almost beat Mark Evans. I got a 10 10 and an 11 11, all trampled. I'm dead. I'm dead. Damn, damn.
Hey, so. I'm multitasking, I'm talking to my friend online. I've, I've been playing the game and playing with y'all. <laughs> I've been playing my PS4 and playing with y'all at the same time. I've been multitasking. So So
Yeah. Hey, at least I can smell it. Sing out show reading in front of me. I said, I'll be a shame yourself eating in front of me. You're not helping. So
Hey. All right, guys. So <laughs> I apologize for being that gone that long. I had to go do something. I was uh, I came back and I was watching the end of the match, and it looked like this time Drake didn't beat them both by himself. That's what it looked to me. And luckily he didn't. And luckily Drake didn't lose. But right now, coming up next, we have the Tag Team Champions. The Submission Fraternity, Yamir, and Bobby Thompson taking on the two members of the Hellhounds of Destruction, Jacob Randleman and Diablo. This is, ma this is the match that's really interesting. Really interesting match, I should say. go our next match the next match here on on FTR on our tag team matchup we have the FTR tag team champions in action as they go one as they go in tag team action against the man the demons who uh, pretty much made their big impact here on FTR that's that we should say by picking the bones off by uh, decimating the ones that lost again, Duke and Drake. And that is, my friend, the Hellhounds of Darkness, leaded by Eric Morrow, which tonight will be in a ma ma will be in one-on-one -on -one matchup as he against goes against Cody Boom in a non-title match. But here comes the next. Here comes the de the demons of hell. The Hellhounds, I mean, Jacob Randleman, and Diablo. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh. Just demonic how he looks right now. Diablo and the and Jacob Randleman are about to go just just in a in a pocket an apocalyptic war zone. I don't know. If they, I I don't think I don't think the tag team champions weren't ready for this. The tag team champions might have sealed their fate. They've been on a losing streak, but their losing streak ended against the tattooed warriors last week. But can they beat the hellhounds of darkness? <laughs> These two men. I don't know what to come to this, but it, you know, these two. I don't know how. I don't know what submission the fraternity is gonna have gotten itself into. 
I mean, look at these guys. These are the two guys that you don't want to get in the ring with. I can tell you that. I mean, we already seen what happened to the Duke and Drake, the Pretty Boy Sensation. I mean, the Pretty Boy Sensation has been on a losing streak as of late. Well, they've lost only two weeks, but only won one, one time. All right, here we go. Bobby Thompson and Jacob Randleman starting off in our first. Oh, Jake. Oh, damn. Bobby, Bob, Bobby Thompson, Bobby Thompson can't get away. Oh shit! Fucking controller. Hold on. Ah, oh, come on. Ah, oh, you son of a bitch. Right now, it has to do this. Hold on, guys. Hello, oh, um, Pichachos. Uh, it has to do this now. Oh, that's bullshit. Why is it like when the controller goes off? Okay, we good? Alright, we're good. Bobby Thompson can't does cannot wait to get this match of the way. Oh, nice come nice counter by Jacob Randleman. Oh look at this. Oh oh shit! The way he just threw him over his shoulder, drops him down. Bobby Thompson didn't want to get, he just wanted to win. When that bell ring, he just went on the attack. He was, he just didn't want to wait until the match, he didn't want to wait until the match was, was started. That was glitchy. Jacob Randon and now picking, now going on the attack of Yamir. You can tell Eric Morrow is watching backstage, watching these two guys just victimize the, two, the tag team champions. I mean, imagine these these three guys taking home gold. Imagine all of all of them having the gold. Who would have stopped them then? Ooh. Ymir tried to stay into the match, but no. Jacob Randleman. Oh, oh gosh. Now what was this? Now Jacob Randleman trying to tag in. It looks like he's trying to tag in Diablo, but no, it looks like he was trying to tag him in, but I don't know what he's doing. Tags in Bobby Thompson again. Oh, very nice, very nice block. By Bobby Thompson, blocking the block in the forearm, and now he sends him off the ropes. What's he gonna be doing? Oh, drops him down with a with a lariat. Bobby Thompson been most most event doing most damage on him on Jacob Randleman. But now Jacob Randleman goes to the edge. Ah, drops him with a German. And now he can tag in Diablo. Diablo back goes back in now. Diablo with his own clothesline drops him with a clothesline with a sack like a sack of potatoes. Destruction is on their minds as the yeah, the hellhounds of darkness are looking for blood for the what their their attentions right now. The hellhounds of darkness this is what Eric Marlowe has said. The hellhounds of darkness are only here for to bring pain and agony to those who come in their way that is what he's all about but it looks like Ymir oh nice Mongolian chops look at he's just all over the Diablo but no Diablo back in the attack now. Oh, what's he going to go for? Oh, gosh, a deep executioner on the outside. I could drop him down. Six. Seven. 
He has to get back in the ring now, and he does. Gets back in on a count of seven. And now what's Jameer thinking of? No. Something in the corner. Nice drop kick. Now, you know, you know for a fact the tag team champions, Bobby Thompson and Yumir, you know for damn well they must feel real good finally getting a win over the Tattoo Warriors. The Tattoo Warriors have been, they have been fighting these guys for quite a while. And now let's see what do we got here. Strikes being applied. Oh, here we go. Bobby Thompson now catches him. What's he going to go for? Going to drop him with a reverse edge CO. Very nice reverse edge CO by Bobby Thompson. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here live in Nashville, Tennessee. As earlier today, our home, the homeboy, Mark Evans. The homeboy of, ne of Tennessee, Mark Evans, went on one-on-one -on -one against the debut of the French vigilante known as... Jeremy Batone. Jeremy Batone was very impressive in that match. He almost had he almost put the streak. He almost ended the streak of, of Mark Evans, but Mark Evans found a way to put a to found a way to, to defeat Jerry Batone. And now Jerry and Mark Evans is now still undefeated. Oh, low blood. Low blow right in the crotch. I don't know how that's not a disqualification. The referee must have not. Maybe he must have seen it at a different angle. Maybe it wasn't a low blow. The demons are very dirty when it comes to doing stuff like this. Pause. Now he just bounces him off the ropes. And then, oh, drops him with it on the knee. This is not looking good for the tag team champions. Oh, wait, wait, what's this? He going to kick him? Oh, kicks him right in the head. Bobby Thompson kicks him right in the head. And now what's this? Oh, very nice. Very nice T-bone suplex by Ymir. Very nice one indeed. And now Ymir... Gonna try to do something. He's trying to throw. He throws him on the outside. Throws him around their corner, right on the outside. I don't know what's he, what's 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 he thinking of. What's he trying to do to to take down Jeremy? Try to take down Jacob Randleman. Now he's going. Oh gosh, he sends him in the corner. And now, oh gosh, this just backs him up in the corner. Just backs him up in the barricade. And now they both go back. Uh-oh. Did I try to go for something? What's that? Oh, no. He was trying to go for a sign. What was that? Look, that looked glitchy. And now he's going to go up top of the turnbuckle now. What is he going for? Sending off. Oh, super flex up the top. Cover now. One. Two. No. Jacob Drake Jacob Randleman with the shoulder up and now shoulders right on the shoulders just driving him on the on there very nice takedown by Jacob Randleman and now he sets the sights tags in his partner I know what was this go for it now oh another DD another executioner and now this time, Ymir is busted wide open. This is not looking good for the... Not looking good. Nice, count, nice counter by Ymir. Look at the crimson mask. Just out for blood. This is, this is what we're talking about. The demons of destruction. The demons of darkness spilling out blood they that's what they're all about they want to bring pain and agony to any team that come across them and now here, here we go he's gonna drop him on his head oh the bloody sunday 
If he does it, this could be it. One, two, three, no. Manages to get the shoulder up. He tried to put him away with that bloody Sunday, but no, it didn't do anything effective. It didn't effective yet. And now he's set him on top of the turnbuckle. What's he going to go for? Boy, what's this? Oh, he's going to put a roll up now. No. He didn't want to go for the pin. And that's, what, that's smart, I guess. Oh, and no. Bobby Thompson with the rake the eyes. Now a forearm. And now what's this? Oh, eat the feet. Eat the motherfucker feet. Eat the feet. Could he put him away? One, two, no. And now, oh, what's this? Picks him up now. Ah, oh, the reverse DDT. The, the submission fraternities are now set. They're trying to send a message. They're sending a message to the tattoo warriors that they're they could be ready as they, as ready as they can be to defend those tag team championships defend the titles again with them the question is though will they be able to to win the championships will they be able to keep the titles oh no here we go with the forearm and another one blocks it oh pele he drops him on his head with that Pele kick. And now he tags in Yamir. He's going he's gonna to give everything to Yamir. Let's see if we go with the cover now. One, two. No, that didn't do nothing. That comeback wasn't effective yet. And now he's going to try to bleed him. He tried to make him busted wide open. But Yamir. Wait, what's Yamir going for? Oh, boy. Frog splash. Frog splash from the top rope. All he has your mirror got to do is do something, but no. Now Bobby Thompson. Now Yamir sending, sending him into the corner. Now what's he about to do? What's he got? What's he got planned to do? He's got him set him on top of the turnbuckle. This is not looking to look good. Going to go for another another suplex off the top rope. Another suplex, superplex. Can we see this happen? Can we see the finish one? No. Jacob Randleman breaks up the pin and scurries off. Bobby Thompson now following him instead of a brawl. And I wait what this is a leg lock. He's got him in the scissors lock. He's got him wrapped around his legs. No. And now we brawl is being and now we've seen a brawl out here. You know, no. We bring the back now we bring in the back of the action into inside the ring. The submission fraternity working very well. Just testing out the weakness, trying to go after the weaknesses of the demons. The demons of the hellhounds. They're looking, they're looking mighty strong right now. He's about to go for something. No, it's Diablo back on the attack. And now here we go with the tag. Jacob Randall and back in the match. If he can put him away, this could be it. You know what's this? Oh, short arm clothesline. Very nice move. Oh no. Oh gosh, this could be it. The suplex power bomb. Suplex power bomb performed by Jacob Randleman. And now we go for a cover here. One, two, no. Yamir stays in it. Oh boy, this could be it. This could be the end. All he has to do, oh no. Oh, sh oh shit. Oh God, oh! 
Jacob Randleman with the cradle pile driver. Go for the cover now. One, two, three, and that's it. They have now put away the tag team champions. What an upset. They were close. They were so close to beating the Hellhounds of Destruction of, of, of Darkness. But it looks like they couldn't do the get the job done. Again, another tag team has been demolished. I don't know what I don't know if anybody could stop them. Not even Eric Morrow either. A fought hard battle. That that submission fraternity brought to the table. They tried all their heart and soul. They're a fighting spirit. They're a fighting team indeed. But how many losses are they gonna are they gonna gonna have in this FTR? How many times are we gonna see them lose? This is ridiculous. I don't know how that. I don't know why they call these guys the tag team champions. So all they do is lose. I mean, they only won lo only once. But the Hellhounds of Darkness pick up another victory. As yes, you can see, a Diablo saw Bobby Thompson try to break up the pin. He saw it coming. There's just no stopping to these guys. There's no stopping to what can they do next? What egotistical plan do they have next? What tag team can they go after now? Shit, I'm starting to wonder now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are just in a, we got yourself a treat here tonight. We have the debut of somebody who, I don't know, I think this guy's from Tennessee, Texas, Kentucky, Mississippi. I don't even know where, all, wherever he is from. He is from, his name is Cowboy Jet. Whatever he's from, he's from wherever he looks like a man from texas or tennessee this i think he's from nashville tennessee that could be it or maybe he's from somewhere but this is a man who is all about the cowboy dream his name is cowboy jet 
He starts off a jet when he once he puts on the jet. I I have no idea what catchphrase he's got for him. <laughs> I suck at him. Boy, who's this? Who is this guy? Cowboy Jet versus this man, Kevin Hall. It looks to be somebody like a Christian knockoff or something. Whatever he is, these guys are two debuts are being shown here tonight. He looks like Christian to me. I mean, look how he's dressed. He looks like he's... Yeah, he, yeah, he does look like a Christian wannabe, doesn't he? He looks like Captain Charisma. More like Captain Crunch. I don't even... What, did he just fucking teleport? He's just teleporting everywhere in this arena, doesn't he? Hell, I like Cowboy Jet more than this dude. Well, let's see. Let's see how these guys go in this bout as we get underway. Oh shit! Look like it looked like Cowboy Jet was about to get a win. Oh, hold on. Yeah, yeah, Cowboy. Yeah, it looked like Cowboy Jet. Bobby Thompson did the same thing earlier. Cowboy Jet look. He looked like a. He tried to look like Woody's. Shit, probably looked like Woody's brother, Woody's son. Another backup at the corner. What the fuck? Hold on, dude. Uh, what was that? That was creepy. <laughs> what a fucker. Anyway. Hold on. Anyway, good. Whew. I don't know where that came from. Eric Morrow is like fucking stalking me now. It's fucking 
cocky prick. They fucking sausage prick. <laughs> I don't know what to say. This guy is fucking crazy. He's more crazier than... I don't know. I don't even know. But anyway, we're getting in this match. Everybody been watching it. Very good match between Cowboy Jet versus Kevin Hall. I, I like. I, I still say Kevin Hall looks like fucking Christian to me, but and Cowboy Jet, the, the way he, the way he's dressed, I, I, he looks like, he does look like somebody like. Uh, he looks. He looks like somebody. Uh, like Woody, he looked like Woody. He looks more like a cowboy singer than a cowboy fighter. I mean, oh, oh, here we go. Cover now. One, two, no. Got the ropes. Got the ropes at a count of one. Very smart. Very smart knowing. Right now, Cowboy Jet now sends him into the corner. Oh, what was this? Uh-oh. What are we going to see here from the Cowboy Jet? It looks like he's going flying. He's going to be flying a torpedo right at Kevin Cole. And go for the torpedo DDT right on the outside. What an impressive... You there, so? Oh, hold on a second, boy. Yep, Aruni, I'm here. Um, I'm here, man. Oh, shit. Cowboy Jet with a... Went with a torpedo DDT. Set flying. And now Kevin... Kevin Cole had a Kevin Texas Cloverleaf. And now what's this... Ooh, Kevin, Cowboy Jet with the DDT. Drops him down on his head. And now he goes for the cover. One, two, no. And a kick out by Kevin Cole. Cowboy Jet. Oh, nice forearm by Kevin Cole. Ooh. Oh, we're about to see something. Oh. Nice snap, Mayor. And a drop kick. What are we going to see here? Oh, oh, nice. Nice forearm. Go for another one. Sends him off. And it drops him with a with a winning edge. I, I guess, yeah, he looks like a, a mixture of Edge and Christian. I got to. Okay, there we go. Call him Chris Edge. Something, I don't know. But what's this? Butterfly suplex sends him off. Not right on the outside. Now what was this? He's got, got him up. Full Nelson neck breaker. Go for the cover right here. The foot is under the ropes. No. That was about almost a kick. That was a kick out of nothing. like it looks like Kevin Cole could be signaling the end as if he puts him away what's he got this what's he got uh oh I fucking knew it the unprettier Kevin Cole with the unprettier I knew it I knew he was Christian from the beginning when he showed his face in this ring look at like Christian Edge knockoff first is a Heath Slater uh, all types of cowboyness Oh, very nice counter by Kevin Cole. Kevin Hole. Hey, I guess that's his name, Kevin Hole.
And they go for a, ooh, a very nice dragon suplex. Now what does Kevin Hall gotta do? What does he have what has he got planned for the cowboy jet next? Let's go for a let's go for a oh very nice headlock. Very nice hold applied. Trying to wrench the neck, trying to put him to sleep. Oh you know, Cowboy Jet get back up. Getting back. Oh, he got him in a headlock. Oh, what's Cowboy Jet gonna do? Oh, he was gonna do something. Go for whatever signature or finisher he had planned for the in the ring. In the back. Oh, it was this. He's all fired up. The cowboy is all fired up now. <laughs> he all fired up. He go for a good. Uh, oh, strikes to the head and another and oh, he hits him with the and now wave. He going up top. What's he going flying here? Oh, the moon salt. Cover down the moonshine salt. One, two, three. No, he calls that the moonshine salt. And he picks him up again. What's he got here? Uh oh, is he gonna call it the jet bomb? The cowboy. Oh, the pet, the jackknife power bomb. He drops him down on his head with the jackknife power bomb. All he has to do is go to pin. All he has to do is pin him in the middle of the ring. Now he goes for it. One, two, three. No. Almost a. Oh, about two and a half. He almost put him away with a two and a half. Oh, we him in the corner. No. Uh oh, what's this? Kevin. Kevin Hall with the full Nelson neck breaker that could put away the cowboy. He's got him down, Michael. Cover now. One, two, and no. Cowboy Jet manages to get the shoulder up. They have his own. Cowboy Jet, Jet with a with a nice sidewalk slam. These two are showing away that they've got they're showing what they've got in this de in their debuts here on the future of wrestling no. It's funny you come back right after a fucking impact. Left. I know, like he's he tells me like, "Oh, you read, uh, you read the whole," and then he don't even say nothing else. Wait, is that what he did? Yeah, he's like, "You read the whole," and I said, "Yeah," and then five minutes later he leaves. <laughs> like motherfucker, <laughs> motherfucker. I'm almost done with the TV. So I look at like uh, I'm doing more tomorrow. Motherfucker. Motherfucker! Get Motherfucker, bitch ass, bitch! Oh, shit. Jutsy. So, what you been doing, Cobra? <laughs> that. What, bourbon your ass off? Hold on, I'm not done. You shit fuck! Damn. Damn. I'm a fucking monster. Yeah, yeah you're a burping monster. Okay. <laughs> That's Kevin Cole going for. Oh, Moon Salt! Goes for his own Moon Salt. One, two, three. It's over finally. Careful. What? 
I might read the Walking Dead comic books. Yeah, they might be better I than might the TV that. show. I've already read, like, the first three seasons of the TV show in comic book form. It's, like, uh -huh. exactly the same. I wonder if it, like, the comic books are shitty, though. I don't even know if they have them on here anymore. I kind of wish I owned the Walking Dead comic books. I bet they'd be like fucking expensive though. I don't know how much to cut. Uh, I don't know how much on. Ah, fuck the weird. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I like the covers of the comic books. They look fucking cool. Like all of them. Do. I don't know how much the comic books would be. Would be. Uh, I think I, I went in a bookstore. They had like. They had a giant book that like had like the first 30 of them or 50 of them and it was like $20 for 50 comic books. Yeah, they probably, they probably did. I don't even think it was that many. It's probably like 30, 30 comic books. Because I started to buy it and I was like, I'm not going to fucking buy a comic book. I wish I had a comic book store. That'd be kind of cool. I never had time for comic books, so yeah. I always play video video games and shit. I have, have I have I still have my books. um I still have my God of War uh comic books. I haven't even opened. They them. had a God of War comic book. Yeah. What the fuck? I am not joking. They did. They do. I didn't even know that. Yeah, they have the Walking Dead comic books on Coral. YouTube. Coral. Coral. Have you seen Coral? Fucking damn. Uh, Two thousand fifteen. Rick, no. Oh, Rick. Oh, I'm not that fucker. <laughs> I hate that fucker. You... Hey, hey pal, is this your Pelham and Jugger Nuggets for the, the 1,000th time? Send me money. Hey guys, that's Big Jugger Nuggets here. <laughs> Ay, caramba. Oh, shit. Ew. Oh. <laughs> what? Fucking goddamn guy cut to pieces in his comic book. Oh. <laughs> I think you said ew because he joined. <laughs> <laughs> ew, impact is a joke. Cry. Speak. Oh shit, what is this? Oh, this is supposed to be uh, Richard Latham. It's I'm here, boy. Oh, I think I muted him. He usually wouldn't shut the fuck up on the phone. So this is supposed to be Richard LaFlam. Who the fuck is Richard LaFlam? I don't know. Some character that I downloaded. He's like. I thought you was talking. I thought you was talking about Impact. Was was Richard LaFlam? No. I I thought no. you were saying he had like multiple personality disorder or something. I don't know, this guy's got to carry out with a blood dildo. Well, there's nothing weird about that. Dr. Nelson, what the fuck? It's 
is, oh, this is Sage. Does McJugger Nuggets watch WWE? I, I don't know. It seems like everyone I've ever watched on YouTube watches fucking WWE. Who is Sage? He's somebody that debuted last week, which, uh, he had, he was on the main event, he went one-on-one -on -one with Tech 9 and, uh, apparently he was, like, in a freaking, he, like, survived everything, basically. He survived three finishers, uh, two or three signatures, and Owen, and King, uh, Cesaro swing, and he met, and he met, and he won. Dang. Like, Fuck. This is the triple threat match too, so Oh yeah, the main event is gonna be Impact versus Cody, so Who's this? Give me some water A lot of weirdos in this match. Give me a sip cereal Carl. Ooh. Wash my back, Carl. Carl? Where's Carl? <laughs> I miss Rick and Carl. <laughs> I want to go back to when Walking Dead was good. I was born in the wrong year, generation. Oh. Carl? Why does he look like a girl? Carl! He looks like a little girl. Um, I don't know. I, <laughs> these are random debuts. Seriously, like I don't know, peanut butter and. Uh, I know an N word that goes with that. No, don't say that. No. <laughs> peanut butter and. N <laughs> <laughs> you fucking racist. <laughs> what a fucking racist. And let's see. <laughs> Nickels? Oops, my microphone got cut off. <laughs> right before I was about to say something. Now, what were you trying to say? I don't know, I don't remember. Peanut butter and what? Peanut butter. Oh, I think I will have some more peanut butter. <laughs> no, it's the PBN. PBN. Peanut butter and... <laughs> never don't, mind. <laughs> don't do. It. Yeah, that's what that's what you mean. Impact peanut butter and never mind. That's too well. So we get triple threat match. Uh, Impact your match will be next. Uh, the next main event. It will be the main event against Cody Boom again. Until like the third time. It looks like uh, Matt Richard is pulling out some steel steps. Oh shit! He ain't hit nothing with this. So he probably did hit somebody. <laughs> yep. He's trying. To, it, it, it's here. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know that movie that comes out like next week called The Hateful Eight? I thought it comes out this week. Does it? I don't I know. Think. I've I don't seen know. it twice already. Well, 
Did you know that they say the N-word in that movie like fucking 50 times? Are you serious? Yeah, they say it so well, fucking well, much. Well, 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 well. Just because Samuel Jackson's in it and he's like the He's in it too? In oh my god. Yeah, that, who do you think they keep- they call the N-word in the movie. They call him the N-word like How many fucking-, fucking wait, wait, is it like a slavery- like, like, slavery movie like the, the Django Unchained? Well, I mean, it doesn't really have anything to do with slavery. But it takes place the same time that, like, slavery was happening, though. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> So that's why I guess they use it. I, I didn't think they would even use it at all, but they use it like 50 times. Oh my gosh. Like why the fuck? Of course. And of course he has to be in it. Of course. Because why not? Why not have a black guy that fucking says the N-word 50 times? No, he's not the one that says it. The white people say it to him. What? <laughs> yeah, they call him the N-word like 50 times. What? What is the jingle? Fucking in the... <laughs> the Django Unchained was a racist ass movie. Yeah, but at least it was about slavery. This movie's not even about slavery, and they still use. And they the got word black like people in it too. Times. That's like they only have one black person in it. What is he a slave? No. He's just a re regular what regular black dude. Yep. By the time black by the time spl black people were all black people were sl it's slavery in those days. The Jingle Unchained. I mean, fucking Samuel Shit, L. Jackson. What if you went to see? What if you went to see that movie in like a really black neighborhood? And you were, oh like, my god! The only white person in the theater. What? The Jingle the only Unchained. White person in there. Shit! I was the only. We, me and my <laughs> grandma. Just keep we were seeing it. Bruh. It was like fucking like packed full of black people. They just keep looking at you. <laughs> Oh fuck! Like, I can tell you this, dude. I can tell you it, when uh, when me and um when me and uh, my grandma went to go see that uh, Medea movie. I think it was the uh, fuck witness. No, it was. I, I think it was oh, the witness God. protection one. The one before that with Medea in it. It was dude, basically I only watched one of those. Fucking it was basically it was just me and her, and and the other people were just black people. That's it. Dude, that meant that for, I think I watched the very first Medea movie when it came out, and it was one of the worst movies I've ever fucking seen. I still remember watching it. Which one was it? Was it I like? Why do people like those movies? I thought it was supposed to be a fucking comedy, and then I remember her shoving a paraplegic man down the fucking stairs. Oh, <laughs> Medea? It wasn't Medea. It was some other woman. Like she shoved her husband, who was in a fucking wheelchair, shoved him down the steps. Tried to fucking drown him. I'm sitting here like I thought this was a comedy, and I was like 12 years old watching this shit. Or maybe 15. I don't remember. I only watched the Medea one. I remember watching it though. I was like, I thought this was a fucking comedy. She's like torturing this man, and he's like in a fucking wheelchair. Maybe this. Maybe you're. Maybe I've this... never seen a movie that I like that in my entire life that I thought was a fucking comedy. Medea is a comedy. Bullshit! Why do people tell me that? And then I fucking sit and watch it, and it's like people fucking crying and like trying to fucking murder each other. What the fuck? It's like if I said fucking Text Chainsaw Massacre was a, a comedy. Even it though is. it kind of is. I'd be like if I showed it to like Dude, fucking Texas you wanna talk about you wanna talk about the only Texas Chainsaw movie that was a horror and comedy? It was the second one. Yeah. That was the only one that was like comedy. The other ones were like fucking horror movies. Like, okay, hold I, on. I'll tell you. But I'll tell me... you something. Never mind. I, I'll tell you something. The, the movie that. The part of the, the remake of Test Chase on that story that weirded me out is when the woman pulls the handgun out of her pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, really? Like which one? Wait, which one was it? Was, was it 2003 really or 2006? Yeah, the remake. I don't believe the that. She pulled it out of her coochie and just, just she shoots her blows her own brains out. In the Why did she just fucking? F Never mind. I'm not even gonna say that. The question is, how the fuck did she hide in there? 
You can still put a lot of stuff in there. If you know yeah. Sorry, Becca's in here. Let's ask her about this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Becca, you can you hide her. things in your pussy? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I, uh, <laughs> Hell I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll send you. Hey, I'll send you a dollar on PlayStation if you do it. Then stop using them. <laughs> oh my god! You know gosh. what's sad is I actually do need a dollar on PlayStation. Oh my gosh, you broke as fuck. <laughs> I do need one too. Oh That's my the gosh! Part. You broke as a motherfucker. Dude, I want to get that. Batman Why are you so skin? desperate it's to like... get a dollar from PlayStation? Are you serious? It's a dollar for PlayStation. A dollar for Batman. <laughs> What are you gonna do with that you dollar? Get a t get a dollar, a ninety nine dollar fucking. I told you what I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get that Batman Arkham Knight outfit that I can't get because it's a dollar. Fucking, I don't why don't you just get a, like a ninety nine cent taco from Taco Bell and there you go, <laughs> problem solved. You think I wouldn't ask Becca that? I, I fucking probably would. Would you? I think I would. <laughs> you would ask her what like, a, oh, can you show? Us, I, how I is really want to know. How, the is it, how do you know? I, how is it fitting to shove stuff on your pussy? I'm gonna. I mean, I could Google it, but I don't fucking want to. I mean, I don't know. Like, she would probably be I, like, "Well, I did have some kind of a memories of that." <laughs> if she did, so that like, oh boy. Oh wait, it says here that they can, women can hide things in their vaginas. How how is that possible? <laughs> I remember, I remember watching this video of like the secure of the security camera of this girl, of this woman. She was hiding so this this fucking box of beer in her like dress. She was hiding a bear in her pussy. Yeah, in her pant, in her in her dress. Did he just say I need to come? <laughs> <He's> watching. <laughs> Dad, I need to come. <laughs> I need to come, brother. That fucking now Seamus is in the fucking comic book. Now he can't read it anymore. And fuck this! I'm not reading the fucking comic book with Seamus in it. Fuck that shit. What? There's a comic book with Seamus in it? Yep, the Walking Dead comic book has Seamus. Oh, in it. okay. Fuck it, it's, it's over. Boy, Seamus, fella, 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 fella. Again with another victory.
a shit. What? It says the next WWE Network special is going to be on March the 12th. Oh, and, let me um, guess. Brock Lesnar is going to be on that? Probably. Oh it's going to be in, in the Rico Coliseum in Toronto. Oh, Edge. In Canada. It's going to be in Canada. We're... <laughs> I don't get I don't get it how like brought like the whole Undertaker and Kane versus uh Wyatt family wasn't on the network special. I mean Undertaker's more popular than Brock and it's the first time he's done a house show in like years. And Brock Lesnar has been how many matches has Brock Lesnar's been? Let's see. Okay, there was Royal Rumble, uh SummerSlam, WrestleMania Battleground, Hell in a Cell, uh, there was a Madison Square Garden, Japan, damn, that's a lot of matches, and the one, uh, that they did in Madison Square, uh, no, not Madison, uh, one with him versus Del Rio somewhere, so basically, Brock Lesnar has been doing more matches ever since he got a new contract. You think that's good? You think that's good? He's doing more yeah. matches now. Yes. Oh. All right, time to take a seven-hour break. <laughs> I think it's time for our main event. As the egotistical, barbaric, psychotic, death defying Eric the Bullet Morrow, the challenger, the number one contender of the FTR heavyweight champion, set his, sets his goals, sets his mind, and, uh, you know, he had his first loss here in FTR last week as he lost against, damn, I don't know if I forgot who he lost to, but it was, Zach, yeah, it was Zach Flash. Zach Flash was the one who hit the rock bottom to, uh, to, uh, him, to Eric Morrow. I don't know, Eric Morrow didn't look too happy. I mean, he, uh, he said he's got plans for Cody Boom tonight, but what kind of plans has he really got for him? After Cody Boom uh, apparently distracted him, yeah, he was in a he was in kind of a different mood. So it was when somebody who's lost twice in a row has decided to be in a good mood after losing all those times. That's kind of creepy. That's a little creepy because you don't know if what he's he has kind of planned or something. But it looks like his plan to work. And we're about to see what's going to happen when Eric Morrow gets his hands on him again. What does he have in mind? And we get our wonder way with our main event. What does that say? Seriously, I'm getting so tired of seeing Fight Owens fight each and every week, acting like he runs the show. He's not as cool as he thinks. Yes, I am. Shut up, Lisa. And spell your name properly. It's Lis Lisa.
Oh boy. Here comes the man who who played mind games with Eric Morrow. The one who had who manipulate who embarrassed him in front of everybody last week on FTR. Somebody who was sick and tired of losing every damn week. Ah, shit. But. I'm back. And better than ah, ever? Bitch. Bitch tits! Ah, titties. Ah, I called. Bitch! Boss, I called Becca tit. I called. <laughs> what the fuck? I called Becca a bitch right in front of her tits! I, 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 I. What are you, a fucking pirate? I, 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 I called Becca. Like a... I called Becca a bitch right in front of her balls. <laughs> what the fuck? Becca's got balls. Big I, balls, I, I, big balls. She's got bigger balls than you. That's like a for shit, damn sure. Oh! oh <laughs> Damn, I think I might like to see them balls. <laughs> Becca, can I see your balls? <laughs> Becca, now why ask your that balls question. Your chest? You, could you need to fucking get that shit situated. <laughs> you should ask that when she comes in here. What, about why her balls are on her chest? <laughs> no, like, can I see your balls? Can I see your balls? Hey Becca, get balls! <laughs> get balls, Becca! Get balls! Get some balls! Just cry! It. Buy the, maybe you buy the DLC, you can get a penis too! Just cry! $120 for some balls and a penis. <laughs> That's what it costs on Star Wars! That's what Star Wars is. You buy and buy and yourself some fucking genitals. <laughs> There's no buy Han Solo's balls. Oh shit! They might get blown off or stabbed. <laughs> Nobody cares about your fucking cult ritual. Nobody cares. Shut up. I, I, I sound like a damn lawnmower trying to start. I, I, I. What? Sound like a Mexican getting hurt. I, I, I. Sound like Hitler. Nine, nine, nine. <laughs> oh, look, it's pink Darth Vader. Are you watching Chad Vader, Chad Vader or something? No. Are you sure? If I want to watch Darth Vader at a fucking grocery store, I would fucking go to Walmart. <laughs> uh, how do you not like Chad Vader? What the fuck? He's a loser. He's a fucking loser. Have you seen that video of, like, Kevin McAllister, like, all grown up? He's like... He doesn't know how to drive he a... Hates... Wait, you're talking about the guy from Home, Home Alone? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. Just me in the house by myself, starring Macaulay Culkin. He looks like a lion. <laughs> he looks like a lion? Yeah, he looks like somebody on drugs, hair. that's what he looks like. No, he looks like Kid Rock. If I saw him from behind, I'd say, damn, look at that girl. He turns around he and is like, like, what? A fucking girl. I'd be like, damn, that girl's got a beard, too, shit. He looks like Kid Rock. Put a fucking I thought he got molested by Michael Jackson. What? Uh, plot twist. He did. Uh oh. Wait, what? Are you s Wait, what? I'm sorry. I hate to root kill your childhood, but Macaulay Culkin got molested by Michael Jackson. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. When did you hear that? Well, you never heard that. I heard that. Must have messed up. Michael Jackson's pedophile world. He used to hang out with Michael Jackson. Proof and get is, Miles, jobs is from Michael him when Jackson he was a, kid. a child molester? Why doesn't uh, he light that fucking cigarette and smoke it? Why is he just fucking holding on to it? Shit, those. Michael Jackson responds to uh, adulations of child molesters. 
They need to make a fucking ho a horror version of Home Alone. Uh, ho yeah, <laughs> Home Alone. I, I I almost said Home Depot for some reason. That's what the that's what the new series with Macaulay uh, something at is in it. That's what it's, it's about. A it's a horror. Yeah, like have you seen like in the end where like he strapped this? He has this guy sh like strapped in all Christmas lights in the in the chair, and he's got like fucking blood all over his like it looked like pain or blood on his chest. Wait, he's on drugs. Have you not seen the movie? Have you you've seen this? You've seen the episode, right? Yeah, I just watched it. Yeah, yeah he just has the guy strap. He has that, uh, have them tied up in a Christmas lights. And you see the credits, he also like... Ah. Ooh. Ten facts about Macaulay Culkin you probably didn't know. Spoiler for Star Wars! He Han Solo gets raped! Macaulay Culkin killed Han Solo! Oh no! What if Macaulay Culkin was actually Kylo Ren when he took the mask off? Oh my gosh. That would've been fucking awesome. That would've been funny. <laughs> Covering at one, two, three. Oh shit, he kicked out. Cody's, Cody uh, sounds like Michael Jackson a little bit. Oh shit. That doesn't sound good by you. Yeah, if, if Michael Jackson was black. He, he was. No, he wasn't. He was a white woman. <laughs> How is he a white woman? <laughs> How is he not a... Oh, God, there he is. There he fucking is. I'm looking at him right now. I mean her. God damn it. <laughs> Michael Jackson is a white that woman. That man over there is a fucking woman. Who? Michael Jackson is a woman. No, yeah. dude. Shit. There's a video of him eating a cheese pizza. The ball? I'm a Kyle K. Coquelin. Coquelin. Nobody, nobody knows what his name means. It's retarded. Oh, yes, it's retarded. <laughs> oh, shit. Eric Mark. Oh, what the fuck? That's what, that was, holy shit, I don't know how that worked, I don't know, <laughs> Eric Marl was like spinning around looking at Cody all around. Whoa. Whoa. And now action being speared out outside this ring. We're at ringside. Throwing he each other in the background. two million views for eating a pizza. Oh, Michael Jackson? No, I'm a Coke, Clay, Club. Calkin, Colkin, Colkin. How do you say his name? I don't get it. Macaulay Colkin, Colkin, Colkin. Macaulay, Colkin. Macaulay, Macaulay, Colkin. His, uh, he, that's a. Macaulay, Colkin. Eat right, pizza. Here we go. Let's just watch it. Eating us, he got two million views after eating a fucking pizza. <laughs> That's the best video I ever seen. Him eating a fucking pizza. Why 
Why does it look like he's depressed after eating that pizza? That's one big ass pizza, I gotta say. Coco, I want to see. You know, Coco's Coco. in the party. Coco. Coco's still in the party. It's always a party when Coco's around. Coco! I just want to watch the bitch. Eric Morrow once again beats Cody for the third time. Oh my god! Oh, what's this? Show us respect. Oh, shit. Well, there we go. Uh, somehow, Eric Morrow showing respect to Cody. That's not expected. After a fought, hard fought battle, Cody Boom, like. Wow. That shocked the hell out of me. Are you sure he's not going to challenge him to a triple threat match? To what? Or three triple... You don't think he's going to challenge Cody to three triple threat matches in a row? <laughs> to determine who the real winner is? Impact. He's not in here anymore, is he? Yeah, he is. Oh, shit. Well, we should... We should do... Hey, let's do ten triple threat matches in a row. Oh my gosh. Let's let's do the best of 30 tournament. Get out of here. Come on, let's do 50 triple threat matches. <laughs> Fuck off. Come on, let's anyway. do uh, 100 and, 130. Well, anyway, that is it for the episode. this episode of FTR. A lot. That's kind of weird. Eric Mara and Cody Boom showing respect for one another. It's quite odd. But anyway, that is going to be it for this episode of FTR. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Rustic Amino. And we're going to find out what is next, what is next for the episode, for the next episode of FTR. What does this mean? Are they these both guys showing respect for each other after that hard-fought battle? Very great. What a main event that was. And anyways... Like, subscribe, share this video if you want, favorite, and until next time, peace. My colleague